Joining me now in Amsterdam, Marco Zubic from Bellfinger, uh, an organization that builds medium-sized projects in more or less many different markets all over the world, actually. Where would you say you're concentrating in the moment? So uh, we went through a number of uh, changes, uh, positive changes over the last couple of years. And with uh, Tom Blades coming to be our new CEO three years ago, uh, we came up with the 246 strategy. So two f is for the uh, project segments where we are. So we do projects and also we do the maintenance activities. And four is for the regions where we are. So that's exactly what you said. We focus a lot on Europe. Europe we divide in two regions, continental Europe, Northwest Europe, uh, US and uh, Middle East. So those are the regions where we, where we focus on and where we offer to our clients, as you said, projects uh, on gas and oil infrastructure uh, up to 100 million euros mm. value. It's a very interesting time in the industry because obviously there's, there's, there's a shift, there's, there's a change and there's a change in, in uh, where the money is going and, and, and what is getting the, the, the fund investment decisions and the like. What are you seeing the market changing? Uh, we see uh, a lot of positive changes over the last, uh, last couple of years. So I think especially here in Europe, the uh, gas infrastructure uh, is quite mature. Uh, oil and gas industry is in general very mature and there are not many investments over the last, uh, last decade. Uh, the level of investment we see now, it's, uh, it's uh, quite high. Uh, so for service companies and the companies doing the projects, uh, now we see much better market than what it used to be three or four years ago. And exactly in Europe, those are the projects of a size of 50 to 100 million euros. Yeah, but what, what sort of projects are they? So, for example, here in Europe, over the last couple of years, we saw a lot of uh, new developments. Uh, at the conference here, uh, over the last two days, we heard a lot about the energy diversification, about different routes of supplying gas to Europe. So we have a couple of big pipelines coming, so, so TAP pipeline, also Nord Stream 2, bringing the um, additional gas to Europe. We also have the LNG import terminals that can bring the uh, American gas uh, to Europe, but again, we need internal infrastructure in, uh, in European countries to be adjusted, to be able to send that gas from one country to another. Also, Groningen field is going to uh, stop producing, mm. so then that gas also has to be replaced, and then it requires uh, different flows of gas, and also uh, a lot of uh, additional uh, compressor stations to be, to be built and also <coughs> to be modified. So that's exactly those projects of 50 to 100 million euros that we are uh, looking after. Are you still finding that people want to invest in the LNG projects so readily when some people are saying actually because of the price, because of the amount, actually some of them are just not sustainable because you know they're, they're not making money? Yeah, I think in, in Europe for the LNG import terminals there is yeah, sufficient, uh, sufficient capacity, but also uh, it's not a matter only of the capacity, but also of the energy security. Because in case the pipeline supply from Russia to Ukraine gets really uh, interrupted or stopped, and then the, if new pipelines are not ready, then the only option for Europe to get the gas from is the LNG terminal. So then uh, we, need, we need that uh, in Europe here to make sure that uh, we have a different uh, sources of gas. And I think it's good for the market to have that competition that at the end, the end users will be uh, paying the, the, uh, the lowest price. Are you still finding investors though wanting to invest in, um, or companies rather, wanting to, to invest in gas projects? when many shareholders might be saying actually we should be choosing and policy makers saying we should be choosing the pure renewables investing in the solar projects and the like and actually investors want to see a long-term return and many people are saying yeah well this is this is not going to be long term so i have these things go very much in parallel so we have a lot of investments on the renewables but still we have a lot of investments on a, on a gas infrastructure projects so europe still needs needs a gas and I think over the last two days, we heard a lot about the forecasts when Europe is going to reach that plateau and the decline in the gas consumption. Uh, so there is still some years that Europe will be needing a lot of uh, gas from the, the fossil origin, and then uh, slowly it will be replaced by, uh, by other sources. Mm -hmm. How do you see the market in China or the number of projects? I mean, are you working in uh, We China? are not so much in China, yeah. So we, uh, 
Uh, we used to have our operation also in Asia, but then uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, decided uh, some years back that uh, to leave that market. So we are focusing really on Europe, Middle East and, uh, and North America. Yeah. So North American market then, uh, a lot of exporting? Or? Yes, yeah. yes. A lot, of, a, lot, a lot of LNG terminals. I mean, today we heard about, uh, you know, some new uh, FERC uh, applications that are going to be filled and, uh, and uh, permissions that are awaited to be awarded. So there is a second wave of these LNG export terminals that's going to happen on the on the south coast so it means the uh, more LNG is going to be available also for Europe and for uh, for other regions so yeah there definitely there are uh, projects are happening and coming up yeah. okay Marco thank you very much for talking to us thank you thank you